here, if we go back to 2018, the International Association of Chiefs of Police and the major city chiefs named ghost guns, quote, a public security threat and called on lawmakers to take action. Now, the interesting thing is since that time, the problem has gotten worse. A special agent from ATF's Los Angeles Field Division reported that 41% of their cases last year involved a ghost gun, 41% of their cases. So Commissioner Harrison, let me ask you, do you believe that the rise in ghost guns puts law enforcement at a greater risk? Thank you, ma'am. I absolutely believe that it puts us at a greater risk. As we've seen an exponential increase, when you look at 2019, we only recovered 29, but in 2020, we've recovered 126. 2021, we've already recovered 83, and we have percentages of those guns used in violent crimes like murders and, and non-fatal shootings because they can't be traced. And so many young people are buying them either on their own or through some other person buying them on their behalf for the sole purpose of illegally carrying them and using them in violent crime. And so we, we know for a fact that that's happening on the streets of America. And it puts us at greater risk because we lose the ability to track down who uses the gun, where they got it from, or all the way back to its origin, to be able to know why and how a person obtained that gun and hold people accountable, not just the person pulling the trigger, but the person who obtained the gun for the sole purpose of passing it on to someone to use it in a violent crime. Thank you. That person is just as guilty, and it makes us exponentially more in danger. Thank you. Attorney General Shapiro, how has the rise in ghost guns affected law enforcement in Pennsylvania? Well, Senator, as I mentioned in my comments earlier, we've seen a, a dramatic increase just over the last few years in the presence of ghost guns all across Pennsylvania. In the last year, we've seen a 437% increase in the number of ghost guns that we've recovered. And those are just what law enforcement has recovered. Um, Senator Lee, in, in his questioning, talked about that balance between protecting liberty, I'm paraphrasing, sir, protecting liberty and protecting public safety and keeping these out of the hands of, of criminals. It is clear to me that this is a glaring loophole that criminals are taking advantage of by being able to ignore the straw purchaser, not have to engage with the gun traffickers, simply walk into a gun show, where at one table they would fail a background check if they bought the fully assembled firearm, but instead they walk over to the next table, buy one of these, no background check, and they're on their way. Or they buy it from someone who purchased it at the gun show. This is the weapon of choice for criminals. This is what we're up against in the real world. This is what's killing people. And all I'm simply here saying is, let's require people to have a background check. Let's make sure that criminals can't just simply walk into a gun show or go online and buy one of these when they otherwise would not be able to buy a gun. That's what we're up against. This is a real threat. This is a serious issue, and it is taking lives in our communities. Thank you. You've made the case cogently. It's appreciated. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Senator. Chairman. Thanks, Senator Feinstein. I understand that uh, Senator